Hello, and welcome to an ep- another episode of Hazmat 101 Consultant Spotlight. I'm your host, Bob Koshigano, a.k.a. Kosh. And today we have with us Jason Gore from Winston-Salem. Jason, how are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. How are you? Good, good, good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Jason Gore, obviously. I started with the department in 2000, um, served in a lot of different functions in the department, mostly on hazmat. Uh, before that, I was briefly a paramedic and started in the hazmat business in the mid-90s as a part of a special operations response team. Great, great. And so tell us a little bit about the winston Sam's department and, and its history. I know a little bit about it, but give us some more detail. Uh, the department itself is fairly old, started in 1785. Uh, the hazmat team came much later, but uh, early 90s serve a large manufacturing uh, presence that was here. Uh, We had two headquarters, large companies, RJ Reynolds, Haynes were uh, based out of Winston-Salem. And with their operations, they had a lot of chemicals that came in and out of Winston-Salem. So they felt the need to have a hazardous materials team. And what is the, what's your average type of call? What's the most types of calls that you guys run on and about how many calls do you guys do a year? Well, I think like most people, are, most of our calls are gas leaks. Um, <laughs> that's about 90% of our calls. Which I think, uh, we, I think we just heard one go out just a few minutes ago, right? Yeah, yeah. There, uh, we went out a little while ago on a gas leak. They're out there right now. Um, I'd say about 100 out of those 300 are actual hazmat responses uh, for chemical releases or whatnot. We have a I-40 comes through Winston-Salem, which is... Um, one of the largest thoroughfares to America. So we have a lot of transportation. We also have rail that comes through here. Thank goodness it doesn't produce a whole lot of hazmats, but between between the highway and the the laboratory presence, the biotechnical presence here, we've had, we get about a hundred or so actual hazmat calls responses. So, So, and before we get into the pictures of your rig, how, how is your team set up? It's, it's, they're on different units. Uh, we were until the fall of 2021, we restructured the team. We are now stationed at engine two or station two. Um, part of the team is on a ladder truck. Part of it's on an engine. The engine is automatically dispatched to any reported hazardous materials incident in Winston-Salem. Um, that's where a lot of our calls come from. Um, if we have a hazmat response, one of the companies goes out of service and takes the hazmat truck and then the other remaining company will come along with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a, a, there's a lot of departments that, um, you know, have, have the team members come from different units versus, you know, fully staffed, uh, hazmat rig. Those are, I think are pretty rare unless you're super big department, but, uh, all right, well, let's jump right into this. Okay. So, um, and you, and this is your coming up right here is your new patch, right? Yes, just came out this uh, fall or this past week. They uh, put it in place. So, um, our truck is a 2018 Freightliner uh, with a Hackney trailer. Um, we put it in service in 2019. It's 55 feet long, 11 inches long, 11 uh, feet tall, two inches. And uh, it's a big, heavy sucker. Uh, like most teams, it's got mitigation-based equipment on it. Um, we don't have a generator on board. We have an inverter, a 50K uh, generator on the tractor itself that powers the trailer. It um, does have a onboard uh, air compressor, which you'll see in some of the other photographs. Now, let me ask you a quick question. With it being a tractor-drawn type apparatus, is there a special kind of uh, driver you need to have or a a driving program, or how does that work? So, yeah, kind of a, this is not the only tractor trailer we have. We have a support unit in addition to this one that supports rescue and hazmat. We just can't carry it all in one truck. So, predominantly, most of our foam is kept on the other one. So we went through a fairly extensive training program. Everybody has to be classified A in okay. order to drive it. Gotcha. So uh, in the cab of the truck, we've got a uh, our MDC mobile laptop, whatnot, is kept back there. 
It's also there to, for any kind of research on the road. Um, it'll hold um, five people in the cab of the truck. That's why we have to bring another company or another, uh, the engine or the ladder in addition to this. Because we, we normally will put eight people on the scene um, in a hazmat response. Okay. Now you said eight. Mm -hmm. And then is that yeah, a regional team also? Are you guys regional or? Well, we would do serve also for Scythe County, uh, which is about 400 square miles, five other cities. So, um, wow. to meet the minimum standards under OSHA to cover all positions, we try to keep eight people, eight techs on duty at all times. Gotcha. Gotcha. I think so, we're looking uh, on the right side now. Yep. So on this side of the truck is predominantly PPE. The, the, the three compartments just ahead of the rear wheels are all PPE based stuff, except for the one directly over the wheels. That's uh, audio visual equipment, which is kind of neat. We can, while the guys are dressing out, they're able to see anything that uh, is projected or screen share from inside the office. Oh, really? That's so, great. So we kind of designed it along this way. It has an awning that goes out so that the, the dress out team is undercover while they're getting dressed out and be somewhat separate from the rest of the operations. Um, some of our equipment is on that side, just can't fit it all in one place, but the bulk of our mitigation equipment, things of that nature are on the other side of the truck, so. So you basically have one side set for PPE and getting dressed out and the other for all your mitigation and, and whatnot, it sounds like. Predominantly, yes. Uh, all that's on that side of the truck um, and those four or two compartments are the, uh, is all PPE and decon, so. On this side of the truck, we have our uh, generator access, which we have both sides are able to get a hold of the uh, drop of cords, but you got your, um, all your air power equipment's right there in that one compartment. Um, so we have lines that we could drop off both sides to power the uh, replace the flow stop, drain stopping program that we have and the uh, air tools that we have. So um, most of our, oil dry and whatnot is kept down low. We keep most of our booms and pads on top of the truck. Um, really what's on this side is all our leak control kits, the Midland and the flow stop is part of it's on this side and part of it's on the other side of the truck. And now I see you guys have several foam buckets there. Do you guys have a foam trailer by any chance or access to large quantities of foam if you had you know, that tractor trailer, as you mentioned on I-40 or some type of rail coming through your, your town that had an event? Uh, so the bulk of our foam is carried on the support unit. Uh -huh. um, what we have there is basically just to get started. So the, the support unit is stationed at uh, Station 20, which is on the north side of town. They would drop off their truck and bring it. Uh, regionally, we do have some resources for large amounts of foam, Colonial Pipeline, comes through Greensboro. So Greensboro has a large amount of foam. Also, we do have a agreement with Forsyth County and their foam resources they have. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah, you know, there's, it's something I've always mentioned, you know, whenever I've taught a class somewhere is to get your resources set up ahead of time and and know who you're gonna call and when to call because trying to figure that out at three o'clock in the morning is doesn't usually work out very well. Absolutely. You know, we, we have a strong working relationship with our uh, LEPC and uh, local oh, partners. Fantastic. Um, this is kind of showing our uh, audio visual equipment we have. We have a 4K uh, video boom, it goes about 35 feet off the rear of the truck um, that's able to go out and focus in uh, pretty accurately. We're working on a drone program that we'll probably have in place by this time next year and all that will be able to be projected on this screen and the one outside. Yeah, drones um, have, drones definitely, especially in the last two or three years, have really, um, I, I think, taken hazmat to another level because with the with the FLIR system they're using and then the capabilities of doing uh, remote air monitoring and whatnot, it's, it's definitely, uh, definitely different from when I started, you know, many, many moons ago. Absolutely. And the inability to give as much information to the technicians before they head down range is, is paramount. And uh, 
we, we kind of thought of that with this truck, you know, being able to, to show the guys outside. The guy doing research inside the office can have his secluded area. And whatever information he's able to find, he can share it with them outside through the screen, uh, through screen sharing. Also, too, our Red Wave system that we just got uh, last year has screen sharing as well. So it can be screen shared from the uh, sampling area back to the truck and uh, conversely to the screen outside. So we, we, we've really stepped up our game as far as uh, some of our abilities. Our, our weather station, a matter of fact, is uh, being remotely operated. Uh, I think it's up to 300 feet from that, from the truck. Wow. Um, through Wi-Fi back to the truck. So um, that, that kind of stepped things up a little bit. You know, everybody was used to mounting them to the truck. This one can be mon mounted on a tripod, a tripod and it's battery operated. So it could be taken you know, a little closer to the scene or at least a little ways from the, uh, the team to get some better perspective as to what the weather conditions are doing. Right, right. Now, you talked about the, the remoteness of the, the weather system and how you can do all that. Do you guys also do remote air monitoring on like a larger scale if you had some of these plants where you could set some type of system around it, if you will? Uh, we are working on getting days um we had a large incident here uh last month we were fire I'm sure you heard about mm -hmm. um that definitely raised some awareness of remote air monitoring it lasted for about a week wow. so we are getting very raised uh right now we do have the echo view which uh uses the wi-fi off a of handheld oh okay um air monitoring <clears throat> which gives you some ability it, it sends it back to a receiving unit that we have in the truck um with the area array, I think we'll definitely uh, increase our capabilities on larger scale incidents. Yeah, we had we had a similar system <clears throat> that we used to use, but unfortunately, you know, we only deployed it really for special events. I don't know if you guys also deal with special events, but um, and and we didn't take the opportunity to deploy it on you know actual incidents where we probably could have got some good intel you know rather quickly. Um, but, uh, you know, again, they, they did come in very handy for, you know, working at the arena or the Citrus Bowl or other large events that we had downtown Orlando, so. Absolutely. And I think that we saw the uh, worth of the uh, area raised when the EPA brought their remote monitoring equipment. We got a chance to work with them and, and see how they operated and were pretty impressed. Yeah. So, especially. The ones. Right. So on top of the truck, as you got pictured there, that's where a lot of our uh, lighter equipment obviously is <laughs> um it's all of our booms and pads and whatnot but you know the oil absorbance and things of that nature are kept the uh, up there so and is that as that's your weather station or is that your uh your video in the background that's sticking up that's the uh, video system that okay. we have it'll go up 35 feet it's air operated um uh, goes up and <clears throat> it gives us a pretty good 360 view um, it, it, it is good for, you know, seeing from the apparatus, obviously the drone will give us even more capabilities. So. I think that's a better showing. picture over there. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a pretty neat system. We can focus in. We, we did it. I think it was like a uh, thousand feet away. We were able to look at a uh, license plate, the uh, sticker on the license plate. So it'll, it'll, it'll focus in pretty close. So. Nice. Yeah, that's um, yeah. yeah, that drone system, that uh, that in conjunction with what you have there, that's that'll be a game changer too. We we'll both of them operate Absolutely. at the same time. Absolutely. Now we have a light tower that's um, not in all these pictures, but we have a which I about everybody's got those anymore. But uh, switched over to an LED pro, uh, system, so it doesn't draw very many amps. We got tripods and whatnot. Um, we also have on the truck a lot of stuff for rehab, so we have fans and heaters and whatnot and in the uh, support unit we actually have the uh, bulk of our decon water heaters and whatnot that we can use on the scene to heat up the water if we decide to go wet and decon so we are that, that brings it that brings up a good point because you guys are in a part of the country where it obviously gets really cold and you get snow and and, and whatnot so um tell us a little bit more detail about that kind of um you know that kind of aspect when you're having to deal with that stuff well we do have some resources uh, available to us within the county um 
you know, for some rehab. The Forsyth County EMS has a bus that's designed to transport. I think it's, I'm kind of guessing here, it's like eight patients at a time. They will bring it out on incidents. It's heated, air conditioned, has fluids, everything in it. Um, but as far as ourselves, we do have some tents that we can uh, access. We have on the truck itself, uh, the two person decon, two line decon that TVI had. Uh, really what we use that for is for ourselves and for a sampling station. Um, in the event that we need to do some sampling downrange, we'll set that up. We don't want to bring anything back to the truck itself. So, right. Um, and it's, it's got an internal berm and all that. But at worst case, if we had to, we could set up a area within those tents, those two line tents that has heaters and whatnot. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, what do you think is the most important thing you've learned in hazmat over the years? And if you had like a couple quick little nuggets that you wanted to share with people, um, what would you say? Uh, never stop learning. This industry is constantly evolving. Um, I know a lot of techs get through school and they think that that's, it's done, it's over with, you run the gas leaks, you get redundant. Um, but then those couple times a year, you get something that really trips you up. You got to read, you know, spend that idle time in the station, your captains, your officers, they can't give all this to you. You need to be a student yourself. Um, and so I, I guess if there was a nugget, uh, vapor pressure matters. <laughs> <It's, it's, laughs> right. Uh, but, um, it, when I teach, uh, which I do teach in industry and in within the fire department, I teach for uh, the state fire marshal's office. Um, it's got to be able to get up and grab you. I spend a lot of time and people look at me pausing. Um, if it doesn't have vapor pressure, leave it alone. <laughs> Don't eat it. Uh, but if it's got vapor pressure, it's going to come up and grab you. So that's that's one of the first things I, I, I determine. Um, one of the first uh property that I look up is what the vapor pressure of that property, that product is. Um, and learn monitoring. It, it, it definitely helps you out on the scene. It gives you a guidance, but don't let it be a crutch. Um, you got to be able to use that information to help decide how you're going to fix the problem. As technicians, we got to fix it. We can't just stop at air monitoring. So Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the, well, I think one of the things and you, as you mentioned, there's a, such a lost art too that people forget about the books. You know, they rely mm -hmm. a lot on apps and there's a lot of great apps out there. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, we also got to remember we, we need to maybe have to go back to the book sometimes when we don't have a connection or or little things mm -hmm. like that. So it's important to stay up mm -hmm. on all of that, but that's awesome. Well, Jason, I appreciate it. Um, real quick, tell, tell everybody where they can find you if they have any more questions about yourself, the team, the department. Uh, they can contact me on my email, which is uh, Jason G at city of WS fire.org. Okay, great. Well, thanks for, for jumping on with us. And real quickly, before we go, I just want to remind everybody about some of the hazmat websites that are available. Also great opportunities for you to learn from the hazmat guys website, hazmat guys round table, uh, hazmat group two hazmat group and common sense. Hazmat, these are all great websites um, for you to check out, ask a question, get some information. And then lastly, I want to thank our sponsors, the Hazmat Guys podcast. Check out Bobby, Mike, Jay-Z, and myself the first Tuesday of every month at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, also check out their National Emergency Response Hazmat Drills, or NERDS book. They put out a book that has about 50 different types of training exercises you know, why try and invent the wheel, reinvent the wheel when, you know, you've got something right there. And then also want to check out responder training under Ron Huffman has been in the fire service for over 35 years in industry, extensive background in propane emergencies, um, has a one inch flare kit, which is called the Dragon Slayer, and also is leading the way across the country and, and showing more people how to do water injection. So you can reach Ron at responder training dot rdh at gmail.com and if you'd like to be a person on or team on spotlight please contact me at bob at hazmat 101 consultants.com we'd love to have you have you show your equipment talk about your team and let's share the information because that's what it's all about and as jason said you know when you're through learning you're through which has always been our motto so jason again thank you very much 
Uh, appreciate it and uh, stay safe out there, everybody.